Today, I want to talk to you guys about this, the DJI Digital FPV system and the news that we now have live video output. Now, over the last couple of days, you've probably seen videos from the likes of Andy RC, JB, Blunty and others talking about this new video output that's been found for the FPV goggles version 1 and version 2 when using it with the ear units. Now, just to be clear, we've always had video output when using the goggles with the DJI FPV drone since the release of that. However, DJI chose not to give us video output when using with the traditional FPV system without using the DJI smart controller. However, some very clever people have managed to work out how DJI actually shared that video when using it with the smart controller, and they've been able to create an app that allows you to get that video output streamed from your goggles directly to a PC, or in the very near future, directly to an Android phone, because they've been working on the software in the background, and not only are they developing an Android application for it, but there is also going to be a whole host of other options coming too, including the ability to run it on a Raspberry Pi or a number of the other small board computers as well, allowing you to even make a standalone HDMI device for using with your FPV goggles. Now, just to be clear, this isn't an official piece of DJI software, but it's not really a hack either. It's more a discovery of what DJI do with the smart controller and taking advantage of that discovery to allow you to get your video output directly without having to spend that five, six hundred dollars directly yourself. Now, what we're going to do now is just take a quick look at this in action and I'll just show you it when connected to my PC. Here and now today, the only real options that are easy to get working is on a PC, but the Android app is in development and you will probably see that released over the next couple of days. And when that does happen, I'll make another video about that as well. Now, I'm not going to walk you through how to actually out and out set this up in this video. And the RC has a very good video on how to do that. If you're interested, I will put a link to it in the description of this one. There literally is no point me replating the same thing that he's already done. But what I will actually show you it is in action, and I'm gonna just talk a little bit around it as we do that. Now, this is very simple to do. All we need to do is power up our goggles, power up our drone, and connect our goggles to the PC via USB. And then in OBS, I've actually got it to set up and share the display with you as well. Now, just before we do that, I wanna talk about who is actually behind this, because there are some thanks that should be shared on this one. And I'm also gonna put some links to the people involved so you can support them as well, because without them, we wouldn't be able to actually have this. Now, one of the people behind this is the same guys that have released the free FCC hack for the DJI FPV drone. If I just jump over to their website and share that with you, that is these guys here, which is uh, Beyond or B3Ond. And these are the guys who actually released the free FCC hack, and they're one of the developers behind this method of sharing video. There's also another person called Jonas or Junas, who's also been involved in the development as well, and he's a key person on the Discord server, which I'll talk about in a minute, showing the development of this too. Now, just to show you how this all actually works, what we're going to do is plug it all in. I'm just going to get my screen set up so it's actually working properly. So what we're going to do is, first of all, connect my goggles and power them up. So we want the power connector for that one there. We're going to power on my DJI FPV drone. Now, I do have props on this. I'm feeling like I want to live a little bit dangerously today. However, remember, you should always have props off whenever you are doing bench testing. We're going to plug that in and I'm just going to put that a little bit further back so you'll be able to actually see me through that camera as well. Now, I haven't connected the USB yet because I just want to make sure everything boots up properly first. Now, when you are doing this, it is worth noting you should have low power mode or the power limit mode turned off with this to actually be able to get it to work because that can affect the output, especially when using it with the Cadex Vista. Now, just to show you what you actually need to do to get this up and running and turned on, what I've got 
are here is the files downloaded directly from the server and I will put a link to them and again if you want to know how to set that up and the RC has the video we're going to now plug in the USB into the goggles if I share my desktop we're then going to go into the file where things are downloaded and I'm going to run this little file here and this will then connect to the goggles and display the video on the screen. So what I'm going to simply do is double click, wait for it to kick in and you can then see that the video has come up on the screen and it is showing you the live feed. Now in a second I'm going to actually switch over to show you both of them. So I'll put both this camera and this camera up so you can see them both at the same time. But as you can see here at the moment you can see the live feed is up and running and you can see that it is working absolutely fine. Now just to jump back to this what we will do now is jump over to the dual screen to show you both up and running and you can now see both cameras on the screen you've got the main camera here and then you've got the dji fpv one down here now just to talk a little bit about performance and latency on this at this moment this is very much alpha testing this literally has just hit the streets and there's a lot being learned around how the video output is handled and better ways of dealing with that video as the last couple of days have gone on and what you're going to see is improvements with this as time goes on as well as i've already said today there is only a way to share this on the pc however there will be an android compatible app available in the very near future as well which will make life a lot easier overall now to give you an idea of latency you can see there if I it is very quick when it is working well I have found at times the latency does slow down and it can add quite a bit of time to it at the moment like this you could certainly fly with it in say fixed wing you wouldn't want to race with it like this at this point but they are working on getting that a lot more stable as well now just to talk a little bit about what options are going to be available on this as we said here and now we've got PC which you can see on the screen there we're going to have the Android app and there's also going to be image files for things like the Raspberry Pi as the other small computers as well which is going to give you a load of options iOS users might be wondering what's going to go on with them and things are a little bit more complicated the info I've read right now is the chances are we're not going to see an iOS version anytime soon or if we are it's going to require a jailbroken device there is also a website that works that allows you to plug your goggles in via USB to the computer and then you click on the website rather than download the files and that does work as well. Now the video output that you get from this is a straight stream of what you see in the goggles without OSD. There is no way of overlaying the OSD at this moment in time and I don't expect that to change in the near future as well. It is simply the same kind of video output that you get when using it with the DJI Smart Controller just via a PC. The performance also varies quite heavily depending on how powerful your computer is. In this I've got a 3070 so it's able to actually deal with this no problem at all but in other computers you could find that it lags quite a bit but hopefully the Android app will bring that improvements with there and you should see it a lot more stable around a smart device we hope anyway moving forward. Now, as I've already mentioned, there are a number of people behind this. The first that I've seen is these guys with the FCC hack. And then you do have that Jonas or Junus person as well, who've been pushing the development on this all of the time too. Now, they do have a dedicated Discord server for this new mod or hack that has become available and it's called DJI FPV Video Out Club and on here you have a quite a large community already of people who are talking and developing and a lot of people have taken what's been done here and ran with it and it's really interesting in a very short period of time just to see how this is developed. You can already see we've got uh, groups for hardware, single board computers and other interesting things as well and people are putting more and more information and new tricks around this out all of the time. Now that is pretty much it for what the situation is today. It is literally 
developing by the second. Now, if you would like to support the developers behind this, I will put a link to where you can do that in the description of this video as well. Please do check that out and certainly you can go and buy them a coffee to thank them for the work they've done here. Now, some of the questions that I've seen posted around the internet on this is, is DJI going to shut this down? Are they going to block it? My opinion is no, I don't really think they'll bother touching this. It really doesn't achieve anything. The people who needed to buy a smart controller to get video output have already done so. And I don't believe for one minute this system is driving any real sales of the smart controller that DJI will want to keep. Personally, I think they will pretty much ignore it because it isn't really a hack. It is simply a workaround found to a setup that they have already added. However, as with all of these things, I would be very careful about updating your firmware on your FPV goggles in the future if having this functionality is important to you. And again, I will keep everyone informed on these things as time goes on and as firmware updates come out, I'll make sure this is part of the checks that we do when doing the testing to make sure that all of the usual functionality is there. Now, that's it for this video. As I've said, if you're interested in seeing how to set it up, go check out Andy RC's one. There is a link to that in the description as well, because that's the simplest way of doing it. And then as soon as we have more info, I'll share it with you guys when it's available.